Hello and a very warm welcome. You're watching Rajasabha TV. It is 1 p.m. time for the midday news with me, Ashwara Kapoor. And here are the headlines. Four days to go for voting in Madhya Pradesh and Mizoram. Prime Minister Modi counts achievements of Shivraj Singh Chauhan government in the last 15 years at Chhatarpur rally. Rahul Gandhi promises a farm loan waiver at Sagar rally. BJP president also campaigns in the state ahead of a Wednesday vote. Election Commission issues notice to Congress leader C.P. Joshi for violating the Model Code of Conduct. BJP has filed a complaint against him for alleged casteist remarks during Rajasthan rally. Joshi had apologized. Rahul Gandhi had disapproved of his statement. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi hold 21st round of border talks in China. Review progress made in bilateral ties since Wuhan summit in April. Talks expected to conclude later today. First high-level visit from Maldives after new government under Mohamed Soli took over. Maldives a foreign minister to arrive on a four-day visit. Talks with External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj slated for Monday. And at the Women's World Boxing Championship, Mary Com and Sonia Jehel to play their gold medal bouts in the summit clashes in the 48kg and 57kg category today. Best ever performance by India since 2008 at the event. Let's begin the news bulletin now with news from five election bound states. First up, news from Madhya Pradesh. Well, three more days are left for campaigning to come to a close in Madhya Pradesh and Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a rally in Chhatarpur. He countered the work done by the Shivraj Singh Chauhan government in the state in the last 15 years. He asked people to remember the Congress style of functioning when they cast their votes. Gat Pandra Varsh Mein हमारे पूरे बुंदेलखंड में जो बदलाव आया है उस बदलाव के आप साक्षी हैं ये बदलाव न राजा लाए हैं न महाराज लाए हैं ये तो शिवराज लाए हैं और भाई और बहनों जब आप वोट देने जा रहे हैं तो आपको याद रखना होगा क्या कारण था कि पंद्रह साल पहले आपने कांग्रेस पार्टी को चुन चुन करके साफ कर दिया था किसी कोने में बचने नहीं दिया था आपका ये गुस्सा क्यों था आपकी कांग्रेस के प्रति इतनी नाराजगी क्यों थी ये नाराजगी इसलिए थी कि उन्होंने राजनीति करना जातिवाद करना भाई भतीजावाद करना अपना पराया करना एक को दूसरे से लड़वाना समाज में खाई पैदा करना बंटवारा करवा देना और उसी को वो राजनीति मानते थे और उसी से अपना चुनावी गणित बिठाया करते थे। The Prime Minister will also hold a rally in Mansour today. 
The Prime Minister has been addressing a slew of rallies in the state that votes for its 230 state assembly. The BJP government in the state led by Shivrat Singh Johan is looking to retain power. And Congress President Rahul Gandhi also campaigned in Madhya Pradesh today, addressing a rally in Sagar. He said that the BJP government in the state has not provided amenities like uh, good schools, colleges and hospitals. He assured that if uh, the Congress party comes to power, it will waive off uh, farmer loans uh, within 10 days. Rahul Gandhi will also campaign in Damo and Tikamgarh. अस्पताल की जरूरत है, कॉलेज की जरूरत है, यूनिवर्सिटी की जरूरत है। मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूँ कि आपको यहाँ पे सरकारी यूनिवर्सिटी मिली? क्या यहाँ आपका सरकारी अस्पताल अच्छा काम करता है? तो मैं आपको स्टेज से एक बात कहना चाहता हूँ और इस बात को आप अच्छी तरह सुन लो। आप इसको अच्छी तरह सुन लो। कांग्रेस पार्टी की सरकार आ रही है और आप बना रहे हो और इसके बाद सरकार आने के बाद आप दस कितना दस दिन कितना एक दो तीन चार पांच छह सात आठ नौ दस और मैं आपको गारंटी देकर कह रहा हूं दस दिन के अंदर मध्य प्रदेश के हर किसान का कर्जा माफ हो जाएगा and BJP President Amit Shah also continues his Madhya Pradesh campaign. He had a road show in uh, Ashok Nagar a short while back and he is also scheduled to hold rallies in Shivpuri, Bhind and Murena. On Friday, he addressed uh, four public meetings in the state. He said that uh, it is the people of Madhya Pradesh to decide which government uh, should be formed in the state. He added that uh, during the Congress rule in the state, people suffered a lot due to lack of jobs, lack of electricity, while Shivra Singh Chauhan has the work to provide electricity in each household. Amit Shah also held public meetings in Chindwara and Sioni districts, saying that the BJP has worked for the overall development of the state. <laughs> ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने किया है आठ करोड़ गरीबों के घर में शौचालय पहुंचाने का काम ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने किया है तेरह करोड़ युवाओं को ऊर्जा बिल की लोन देने का काम ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने किया है बारह करोड़ माताओं और बच्चों को टीका लगाने का काम ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने किया है हर ट्राइबल जिले के अंदर हर ट्राइबल मंडल के अंदर दस करोड़ रुपया खरीदने का काम ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने किया है and Home Minister Rajnath Singh campaigned for the BJP in Madhya Pradesh on Friday, addressing poor rallies in Reva and in Singroli. He said that his party will be voted back to power in the state for the fourth straight term on the basis of good work done by the BJP governments in the state since 2003. Accusing the Congress party of indulging in divisive politics, Rajnath Singh said that there was hardly any development in Madhya Pradesh under the Congress rule. And lauding the Shivrat Singh Chauhan government in the state, Rajnath Singh said that he is very popular and is dedicated to the welfare of the people. And Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan also addressed 12 poll rallies in the state. Madhya Pradesh, remember, will have a single phase of polling on 28th of November for its 230 member assembly, and the counting of votes will take place on 11th of December. News from other poll-bound states, uh, UP chairperson Sonia Gandhi on Friday lashed out at Telangana's TRS government, saying that it neglected Dalits, tribals, minorities, women and students. Addressing an election rally in Metchal, she said that the Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao only worked for himself and those close to him. Sonia Gandhi also said that the development that was expected following the creation of Telangana did not happen under Rao. She visited Telangana for the first time since the state's creation in June 2014. She also said that the Congress was committed to special category status for Andhra Pradesh. Congress President Rahul Gandhi was also present at the rally. Our Congress party, Telangana, 
और समाज के हर एक वर्ग की भलाई के लिए योजनाओं और कार्यक्रमों के बारे में आपको बताया है जिसका जिक्र हमारे घोषणा पात्र में विस्तार से किया गया है चाहे किसानों के हित की हो युवाओं के रोजगार से जुड़ी हो बच्चों और महिलाओं के कल्याण की हो या समाज के वंचित वर्गों के उत्थान की हो and the election commission has expressed a satisfaction at the election preparedness for the telangana assembly elections there would be 32796 polling stations in the state and all the polling stations would have electronic voting machines as well as voter verifiable paper order trail machines the 119 member assembly votes on 7th of december And the Nathudwara did returning officer in Rajasthan has sent notice to Congress leader C P Joshi over his controversial remarks made during a rally in the state. Now Joshi's reply has been sought by 11 p.m. tomorrow. Remember, he's contesting from Nathudwara for the assembly polls. Remember, on Friday the BJP had lodged a complaint with the election commission against him for his alleged casteist remarks made during a poll meeting in Rajasthan. Though Joshi on Friday apologized for his comments, the BJP rejected the apology, and the party asked Congress Chief uh, Rahul Gandhi to expel him from the party. Rahul Gandhi, on his part, has uh, said on Twitter that the comments made by C P Joshi do not reflect and are contrary to the ideas of uh, the Congress Party, and that he should apologize. The Congress Chief also asked other party leaders to refrain from making such statements that uh, would hurt uh, uh, sentiments of a particular segment of society. Polls in Rajasthan remember are scheduled on 7th of December. News from Jammu and Kashmir, where voting for the third phase of uh, the state uh, panchayat elections is underway. The polling began at 8 in the morning in uh, 2,773 polling stations, and uh, the polling would end at 2 in the afternoon. There are 5,239 candidates contesting for 358 sarpanch and 1,652 punch seats. The nine-phase elections being conducted on the non-party basis, remember, began on 17th of November, and uh, in the first phase of polling, 74.1% polling was recorded. In the second phase, 71.1% polling was witnessed across the state. On to another big story related to the elections. For the first time in the country's electoral history, NOTA or none of the above will be a candidate. The fictitious candidate will be introduced during the upcoming municipal polls in Haryana, and this will make it a must for the winning candidates to secure more votes than those cast for NOTA. Elections to the municipal corporations of Karnal, Panipat, Yamuna Nagar, Rohtak, and Hisar will be held on 16th of December. And in another first, the mayors of the five municipal corporations too will be elected directly through this unique uh, multi-post electronic voting machines. If in the election all the contesting candidates individually receive less votes than those cast for the fictional candidate nota, none of the candidates will be declared elected. The polls will be cancelled and held afresh. And uh, if a contesting candidate and the nota both receive equal valid votes, the candidate and not the fictional candidate will be declared elected. But uh, in case of a re-election, if nota again gets the highest number of uh, votes, the candidate with the second highest votes will be declared as elected. All the main political parties in the state have said that they would fight polls on their respective party symbols. In midday news, we'll slip into a very short break. Stay tuned. Fertilizer use is not very high, but problem is the fertilizer which we are using, roughly 80% of that or 83% of that is urea alone. Our phosphorus and potassium use is very less as compared to urea. 
and if you see the urea use alone that is also not very high only thing that proportion is imbalanced nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so this ratio should be there if we are able to restore this ratio then nothing will happen to our land our land will remain very healthy and will be sustainable for agriculture in future watch urega with dr suresh kumar choudhury additional director general soil and water management department icar new delhi saturday 4 pm sunday 12 noon only on rajya sabha television Welcome back after the break. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the Kartarpur corridor could act as an important bridge between the people of India and Pakistan. Speaking at an event on the occasion of the birth anniversary of the first Sikh Guru Guru Nanak in Delhi on Friday, the Prime Minister said that the corridor and the resultant connects could be leading to a better future. He added that uh, that uh, no one had predicted that the berlin wall would fall saying that the importance of people to people contact cannot be undermined in a significant decision the union cabinet had on thursday declared a proposal to develop a corridor from dera baba nanak in punjab's gurdaspur district to the international border to facilitate indian pilgrims to visit gurudwara darbar sahib in kartarpur in pakistan President Ramnath Govind along with Punjab Chief Minister Amrinder Singh will lay the foundation of the corridor at Dera Baba Nanak in Gurdaspur on 26th of November. Main manta hu ki Kartarpur ka ye nirnay san 47 mein jo hua so hua कुछ ऐसी बातें होती हैं जो शायद सरकारों सेनाओं उसके बीच जो होता होगा होता होगा उसके रास्ते कब निकलेंगे वो तो समय बताएगा लेकिन जन जन का जुड़ाव पीपल टू पीपल कांटेक्ट उसकी एक ताकत होती है किसने सोचा था कि बर्लिन की दीवार गिर सकती है शायद गुरु नानक देव जी के आशीर्वाद से करतारपुर का कॉरिडोर ये सिर्फ कॉरिडोर नहीं जन जन को जोड़ने का एक बहुत बड़ा कारण बन सकता है गुरुबाणी का एक एक शब्द उसमें हमें शक्ति दे सकता है Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be delivering the 50th edition of his radio address Man Ki Baat this week. Through this one of its kind initiative, the Prime Minister has managed to engage the country in numerous government initiatives as well as social causes, sparking a social transformation in the country. Today we will look at how his appeal of Beti Bachao Beti Padhao resonated with the people and how it even rescued those states that had abysmal sex ratios. the public meeting in panipat where the beti bachao beti padhao campaign was kick started prime minister modi called daughters the future and female feticide a blot on the nation taking up the theme in his man ki baat address he involved the country in a new initiative aap jante hain sarkar ke taraf se ek beti bachao beti padhao karyakram chal raha hai lekin jab sarkar ka karyakram koi vyakti samaj gaon अपना बना ले तब उसकी ताकत कितनी बढ़ जाती है पिछले दिनों हरियाणा के बीबीपुर गांव के एक सरपंच श्रीमान सुनील जगलान जी उन्हें एक बहुत बड़ा मजेदार इनिशिएटिव लिया उन्होंने सेल्फी विथ डॉटर इसकी स्पर्धा की अपने गांव में और एक माहौल ऐसा बन गया कि हर पिता को अपनी बेटी के साथ सेल्फी निकाल करके सोशल मीडिया में रखने का मन कर गया ये कल्पना मुझे अच्छी लगी उसके पीछे कुछ कारण भी है हरियाणा में बालकों की तुलना में बालिकों की संख्या बहुत कम है देश के करीब सौ जिले ऐसे हैं जिसमें भी ये हालत चिंताजनक है 
हरियाणा में सबसे ज्यादा एक छोटे से गांव का सरपंच बेटी बचाओ अभियान को इस प्रकार का मोड़ दे तब मन को बहुत आनंद होता है और एक नई आशा जगती है The Prime Minister asked parents to post selfies with their daughters. The selfies were only a pretext. The message was to prevent female feticide. At one time, Haryana ranked the highest in female feticide. In 2014, Sonipat district had just 830 females to 1,000 males. Post the Beti Bachao Beti Padhao campaign in 2015, the female count reached 867. In 2016 it was 902 and 2017 saw the figure reaching 937. By April 2018 the sex ratio reached 947 females to 1000 males just 3 short of 950 which experts consider a healthy average. And that's not just a story of Sonipat alone. It's a trend that's visible in other parts of the country as well. Clearly the message of Man Ki Baat has hit home. ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी story coming in from uttar pradesh uh, where the ayodhya has been turned into a fortress with multiple layers of security and the deployment of drones a day before the dharam sabha called by the vishwa hindu parishad a up police uh, spokesperson said that one additional dgp one deputy inspector general three senior superintendents of police 10 additional sps a 21 deputy sps 160 inspectors 700 constables 42 companies of psc 5 companies of raf ats commandos and drones have been deployed the organizers of the dharam sabha claim that over 3 lakh people were likely to arrive for the program on sunday the event is reportedly being held to call for the construction of the ram temple there section 144 has been imposed in ayodhya National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi held the 21st round of border talks in China's southwestern Sichuan province today. The two senior officials would also review the progress made in bilateral ties since the Wuhan summit between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping in April. Doval and Wang are designated special representatives for the border talks between India and China. The talks were expected to be concluded uh, concluded later today. Now this is the first round of talks for Wang after he succeeded uh, state councillor Yang Jiechi earlier this year. Wang has become uh, the state councillor a rank higher than the foreign minister in the Chinese government's hierarchy. Officials claim uh, that this round of uh, talks may focus more on reviewing the progress on the trade and the maintenance of peace at borders. than the movement uh, towards a solution to the border dispute remember the india china border dispute covers a 3488 km long line of actual control or the lac and foreign minister of the maldives uh, abdullah shahid will arrive in new delhi today evening on a four day visit now this will be the first high level visit from the island nation after the new government under president ibrahim mohammed soli took oath prime minister narendra modi remember had attended the swearing in ceremony of president soli on 17th of november in mali during their meeting modi and soli had vowed to renew close ties and friendship between the two countries and had agreed on the importance of maintaining peace and security in the indian ocean region external affairs minister sushma swaraj will hold extensive talks with shahid on monday In the Maldives, uh, ties uh, came under a strain uh, under the previous regime, which was perceived to be closer to China. Big story coming in from the sports front: boxers Mary Kom and Sonia Chahal will play their final bouts today, seeking a historic uh, sixth gold. Mary Kom will take on Ukraine's uh, Hanna Okota in the 48 kilogram summit bout. And Sonia, on the other hand, faces uh, Vanna Omela Gabriel of Germany in her final bout in the 57 kilogram category. With the two bronze medals already won and two gold medal round bouts yet to come, India has produced its best ever show since the 2008 edition, when the country had won one gold, one silver, and two bronze medals. 
Earlier on Friday, Simranjit Kaur had settled for a bronze medal after she lost to China's uh, Tao Dang in the 64 kilogram semi finals. And in hockey, India beat Argentina 5 0 in their first warm up match of the men's hockey World Cup in Bhuvneshwar on Friday. Harman Preet Singh, Lalit Upadhyay, Dilpreet, and uh, Hardik Singh were the goal scorers. The first and uh, the third goals were penalty corner conversions, while the rest of the goals were field goals. India will face uh, Spain in their second and final warm up match tomorrow. Remember, the World Cup begins in Bhuvneshwar on 28th of November and the final will be played on the 6th of next month. 16 nations are participating in the tournament. And that's it from me and the entire Rajasabha TV news team at the moment. Thanks for watching.